Hello again, friends. So one of the final projects, uh, or one of the final, <laughs> there are probably still a couple others, but this is a big one. Uh, and that is to set up a, uh, an operating position here in the back of the truck. So uh, you may remember that, uh, I guess I might as well show it. You may remember in an earlier video last year, that the we have the Vic 3 master control station here. We've got one crew station by the passenger side and one crew station here by the driver's side. Um, and this all works very well. But uh, for the rear, I never got around to creating uh, a position and I just had the I just had a speaker and a and a Vic 3 control station sitting here in the back right uh, you know part of the uh, uh, the shelf here right in front of the coupler. K1HF, name here is Mark. Speakers, speakers there. So now I'm in the process of actually creating an official one. And if you can see this, uh, what I did is I acquired on uh, from a friend, uh, this is a panel that is typically seen in a Humvee. There is a radio shelf in the front of the Humvee between the passenger and driver's seat, and in between the legs of that uh, of that uh, radio shelf goes this. Yeah, and here's a photo I found on the internet. Um, you can see uh, the bottom the bottom section of the shelf uh, has some Vic equipment. Happens to be Vic One equipment, not Vic Three, but you, you kind of get the idea. And it's designed for two cruise, two Vic Three crew stations. And you can see that these holes line up uh, very well. But in my case, uh, I have one control station. I need a speaker. So I've actually added uh, some four holes here. Um, and I'll show this later as I assemble it for this speaker. Now, this speaker is a, um, who makes this? This is McDowell Research. You may have seen these on eBay. What I particularly like about this is it has the the handset and volume controls in the front of the speaker. Many of them uh, have the controls on the side. And, you know, that's just less convenient than, than having this. And it's got a nice little hook, a nice little spot for the microphone or handset to hang. And so I'm really thrilled about this. Uh, and so the plan here is, if I can show this, let's move this aside. The plan here is to mount this underneath here. Um, and as you can see, in order to do that, I've had to completely take apart my Singar system and even separate parts of the uh, mount. I don't know if you can really make out what the, all that is, but I just held it up so I can drill some holes because these holes are going to end up having to go through the Singar's mount. Uh, they just can't avoid it. And then, uh, so it'll mount... Um, these two tabs on the top here, and then there's one tab on the side, which will mount here. All right, and uh, and that's what it'll look like. So what I wanted to do before I uh, spent all this time and energy building all this out, I wanted to make sure that this speaker was going to work, have plenty of volume. Oh, by the way, and the other thing I want to mention here is power. So this requires, uh, there's a connector here for power. This is the connector for audio. Uh, the audio connector is a, to the other end of it is just a standard U229 or whatever. And for a test radio, I'm using my 1702 just to produce some noise. So where am I going to get power for this? Uh, it takes uh, anywhere from 10 to 32 volts. And, you know, uh, here's my power uh, management station. And I could have opened it up and I could have done all that. Um, but what I decided to do is, since it's going to be sitting right next to a, um, a VIC-3 uh, control station, that the highway cable that goes in and out of this already contains system voltage. Typically 24 volts, in my case, seems to be 20 volts. I'm not exactly sure why, but everything does seem to work fine. And so instead of having to run a new cable all the way in, into the battery system and, and all that stuff, I decided, I decided what I would do is um, take the power. So this is the end of the line. 
This is the last unit uh, unit in the uh, VIC-3 chain. So the input will come over here, and I, what I will do is I will take power off this output of the control station and a short wire and, and get the thing running. I think that's the easiest and makes logical sense since the uh, VIC-3 system is really controlling all of the audio in the truck. And so, you know, you turn it on and everything, all audio related things come on. So I thought that was a good decision. So the next thing I want to try here is, um, so what I've done, let's take a look at some cabling. This is a highway cable. I had, I had a, a whole bunch of these and one was like three feet long, which is totally useless in most applications. So I decided to cut it off. I try to open this up. It's just, it's just impossible. I couldn't figure it out. Um, I opened it up and I figured out through some documentation that the output power uh, from the from the victory on the highway comes from red and black. Hey, no uh, no surprise there. Nice and convenient. And then what I've done is I've got a couple of uh, alligator clips to uh, to this wire. This wire goes all the way into the speaker. And uh, you know I've I've got my uh, 72 uh, 1702 for some squelch. So let's power everything up and. Um, Let's see how we got how it works here. So I think we just flip this up. Nope, what am I doing wrong here? Yeah, hold oh I see, I see the problem. Hold on one second. Okay, so uh, first thing I had to move the uh, control station back into a position where it can get power. So here is the here is the highway cable coming in from the rest of the system. Here's the highway cable coming out, and this is where I uh, I cut I cut it and put put it in. And now it's going all the way into this. So let's turn this on and see what happens. Okay, we've got power. So green means power. Yellow means there's activity, which is a convenient thing, especially if you've got the speakers turned off or turned down. Uh, you can see if there's any activity. I think that's what it's designed to do. Uh, okay, so the next thing we had to do is make some noise. And so we're going to turn this uh, from squelch being on. Sorry about that the squelch being off and let's see what we get oh, there it is and you can see by the way the yellow has turned on indicating activity audio activity all right so let's, let's see how loud this thing will get i, ho I hope it translates uh, on the video let's see all right well uh <laughs> i'm gonna turn that off I don't know how well that came out but it was blasting loud i, I mean i could probably turn this on and hear down by the street, um, you know, which is a bit away. So yeah, all seems to work. So now uh, the next part of this project is to get this uh, shelf mounted. No simple task, by the way. Uh, it's going to need some spacers and some other things. Then get all this uh, mounted on the panel, get it wired up, put the you know ha get this cable made a little bit more permanently with some heat shrink and wrap it up and you know just sort of make a nice project out of it uh and then i will have a completely working uh vic3 station in the rear in a nice nice way and then uh, yeah maybe only one or two more radio related projects on this truck and um maybe one or two more electrical and that's and that's it for the radio stuff well thanks for joining and uh please subscribe thanks